All right, welcome to this video, which covers the second part of section 8.4. We will be solving rational equations. And just as a reminder, rational equations are equations that have fractions in them. And there's no way to describe an equation like this first one other than it's ugly. No one wants to solve equations with fractions in them. And we're not going to. We're going to solve equations without fractions. To be able to do that, we need to know how to eliminate the fractions. If you remember from when we did this earlier in the semester, what we did was we multiplied both sides of the equation by the least common denominator. And so the key to this problem, or any problem like it, is to be able to tell what is the least common denominator. And so if I take the first fraction, let's say we chose x as our least common denominator. That works great for the first fraction. The x's would cancel, but I remember you have to multiply everything by that denominator. So if I multiply the second fraction by x, the x squared doesn't cancel. So we actually need x squared to be our least common denominator. So we need to multiply each term by x squared. And so when x goes into x squared, that leaves 1x. And then over here, the x squareds cancel. And our equation gets a whole lot simpler. We end up with x squared times 1 in the first term, which is x squared. Then we have a minus 3 times x. Remember, one of these x is canceled, so we have 3 times x. And then on the other side of the equation, both x squareds canceled, and we just have a negative 2. Now, if you look at this equation, it is much, much simpler than what we started with. There's no more fractions. But you should notice, though, that what kind of equation this is. Anytime we have a squared in it, that means it's a quadratic equation. You recall. Remember, when we have quadratics, that's when we want to get it into ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. We need everything set equal to zero. And so we need to do some preliminary work to be able to solve this. We need to have that negative 2 on the left hand side. So we end up with x squared minus 3x plus 2 equals zero. And now we can go ahead and apply our zero factor property. If we factor, we end up with x minus 2 and x minus 1, which means x minus 2 has to equal 0, or x minus 1 has to equal 0. Add 2 to both sides, giving x equals 2. Then add 1 to both sides, giving x equals 1. Now, the thing about solving rational equations is that sometimes we get answers that are called extraneous, like we did back when we had radical equations. These equations can be radical, or can be, or these solutions can be extraneous as well. So, if you look back at your original equation, we should really ask ourselves, what can't x equal? x cannot equal, in this case, what? what value of x would give us a denominator of 0? And the answer for this problem is x equals 0. x can't be 0. Now since both both of our solutions, x equals 2 and x equals 1, neither one of them are equal to 0, that means neither one of those solutions are extraneous. So we're going to include both 1 and 2 in our solution set. Now it's actually a good habit with these problems to write down what values of x we can't have at the very beginning of the problem. Let's go ahead and do that in this next one. Um, if I were to go ahead and solve b, notice that in the first or the far right denominator, x plus 2, that gives us that x can't equal negative 2. And then the middle denominator, we have x minus 2. If x is equal to a positive 2, then we have 2 minus 2 equals 0. So x can't equal positive 2. And then for the left-hand side, we really should look at factoring 
And since that's a difference of squares, it's x plus 2 and x minus 2. Notice those are the same factors that are included in the other two denominators. So we're good with w those values of x. Those are values that we cannot have. My least common denominator in this case is going to be x plus 2 and x minus 2. We need both of them because we need to be able to get rid of the denominator on the left hand side, the bottom, or the middle denominator, and the right hand side denominator. So if I go ahead and rewrite this, it's going to look like x over x plus 2 times x minus 2 times x plus 2 times x minus 2. We have minus 2 over x minus 2 times my least common denominator, x plus 2, x minus 2. And then that is equal to 1 over x plus 2 times my x plus 2 x minus 2, my least common denominator. And th the beauty of this is because our LCD includes every factor in the denominators, all our fractions disappear again. So the x plus 2's cancel here, the x minus 2's cancel, my second fraction, the x minus 2's cancel, and then my last fraction, the x plus 2's cancel. So my equa equation becomes x minus 2 times x plus 2 equals x minus 2. And we can distribute. We have x minus 2x, and then minus 2 times 4 is a negative 4, equals x minus 2. Can combine some like terms here. x minus 2x is a negative 1x minus 4 equals x minus 2. And we can go ahead and add x to both sides. So if we get the x's on the right hand side, then we need to get the numbers on the other side. So that's going to make this a plus 2. And we end up with 2x equals negative 2 which if we divide both sides by 2, we get x equals negative 1. And that answer is okay because we couldn't have negative 2 or positive 2, but we got negative 1, so that answer is okay. Alright, so go ahead and solve the one problem in your self-check. Be sure to um, check for extraneous answers. What value of x can we not have? Alright, thanks. We'll see you in class.